everyone. Happy Friday to you. Welcome to Peach Guitars live video. There's a lot of reverb I've got there and I'm, uh, I'm going to keep it that way because I love reverb and for this particular theme that I'm going with today, I think it's going to work quite well. Before I get into that, let me wish you all well. First of all, I hope you're all having a good week. Um, as always, things have been going very well for us here. Thank you everyone who's been giving us your custom over the past week and indeed throughout the whole period of this quarantine um, ugliness. You've been amazing, you know, your, your undying passion for buying guitar gear has proven itself to be just overwhelming. So thank you everyone, first and foremost, who's been, who's been continuing to purchase from us, both online and through our sales team on the phone and emails and stuff like that. So I want, want to get that out of the way and wish you all well. As I alluded to there, the theme for this video, as you can probably tell from the guitar I started out playing, is going to be something that's going to, I think, have probably an appeal to most players, most of the guys that watch our YouTube channel. Um, so <clears throat> what I want to do today is kind of pull together a bunch of single cut style guitars. And by single cut, I'm specifically referring to Les Paul style instruments, because I guess single cut is quite an ambiguous term. You could, you could consider a Telecaster style guitar a single cut. But no, I'm not doing any of that. I'm just focusing on Les Paul, basically mahogany bodied um, style instruments with set neck and I'm going to kind of approach this similar in a similar fashion to what we did last week with the HSS because that proved to be really popular with a lot of people out there so thank you to everyone who's watched that I want to apply the same kind of uh, theme and the same kind of approach to this video so I've got seven guitars in the lineup today I think yes Luke zoomed out so you can see everything that's in the lineup I'm going to run you through basically a wide cross-section so I'm not just focusing on high-end stuff there was a couple of different ways that um, we wanted to do this video, either to focus more on, we, we've got so many guitars here, so many brands that we try and cover, and there's a lot of guitars that are maybe, you know, this this being the benchmark, a 59 Custom Shop Les Paul, there's a lot of single cut guitars that I wanted to put in today that would maybe have been, you know, a completely radical departure from something like this. We've got guitars like James Trussart, and we've got some loud and so solid bodies and stuff like that. But decided really just to keep it more um, along this kind of this kind of a line, so that you've got more of a more of an easily recognisable reference point. So the guitars you're going to see are all um, variations on this kind of theme. So I don't really need to give this guitar a huge introduction. I don't think it's a 59 60th anniversary Custom Shop Les Paul standard Royal T burst finish, VOS finish as well. So I think. Uh, this is basically what most people will think of when they think of a Les Paul. This is what most people aspire to when they're looking for a Les Paul style instrument. Obviously, it comes with the price tag to match. So if you're not looking quite to, you know, if you're not quite looking to spend this kind of money, hopefully today you're going to find some alternatives that might float your boat that cost a little bit less. So for the rest of the context of the rig, I'm plugged into an amplifier from our friends at Magnetone today, which you haven't featured on the videos thus far. Um, we've had a couple of Magnetone amps in the shop this whole time, and a few people have asked about them. This seemed like a good opportunity to use some kind of classic vintage voiced amplifier. Um, so the Magnetone, this is the M80, which is basically Marshall-ish uh, in its nature. It's kind of got a bit of a, a super lead kind of tone, which you'll have heard on the opening there, I wanted to play some sort of Aerosmith stuff to kind of put you in a put you in a mind frame of what I want to get out of these guitars. That's the amp. It's set pretty much clean, just with a bit, little bit of breakup. On the floor, I've got a couple of pedals as well. I've got from our friends Orange. I've got the two-stroke um, Boost EQ, which is a fantastic sounding pedal. We haven't featured any Orange stuff really in these videos either so far. But it's a really great boost. I'm going to use that as a low gain boost. For high gain stuff, you're going to hear a Friedman BEOD, but this is the new Blackout Edition, which we haven't seen before. So that's brand new to us as well. Sounds really good. And I've got the HX effects from Line 6, as always, uh, which is providing the reverb as well as maybe a bit of delay here and there too. So it's pretty simple, bare bones kind of a thing. That's what I want to kind of get across with these guitars is this, this particular setup with this amp, it's a very revealing sound. So hopefully you're going to hear the qualities of each guitar's in abundance because it's not, apart from when I use the Friedman pedal, I'm not going to hide it behind loads of gain. So let me show you some more tones with this Les Paul. 
I'm not going to talk as much as I normally do. I say that now, but I'm going to aim not to talk as much as I normally do so that you can just hear the guitars and decide for yourself. And I'll offer up my thoughts after I've played each guitar. I'll answer your questions in the live chat, as I always will. Um, so let's just let's kick off. And I'm going to talk you through the specs when I've played this guitar as well. So let's hear some more tones. <laughs> Okay, so I'm not going to spend too long playing on Les Paul because I think most people will know what a good Les Paul sounds like and this is a, certainly a very good example of a good Les Paul. I picked this guitar because it's got a lot of that zingy top end which is not necessarily something that you do associate with a Les Paul sound but it's something that, that certainly I always look for. You can hear it even acoustically. This guitar's got a lot of top end content and it hasn't always been that way. Some Gibson Custom Shop guitars have have struggled for those high frequencies to get them being that open but that is i think a good reference to to how these guitars originally were in the late 50s and early 60s they had a lot of brightness and they had a lot of top end um, and i think more people are understanding that and recognizing that fact gibson are certainly recognizing that and really putting a lot of efforts into these guitars to make sure that they come across that way tonally so i have got some specs i've talked about these before but Everything here is pretty uniform. It's all the same kind of mahogany wood body with a maple top, uh, mahogany neck. This guitar is actually a hand-picked top, so this is one of the guitars that John has picked out when he went to the Nashville factory, which he's chosen very well because it's a stunning guitar. Uh, this is the Royal T-Burst in the VOS finish, as I talked about, so it's very, very light kind of aging. No relicking going on on the guitar, but it's just supposed to mimic how an old guitar would have ended up to this day. And they're the custom bucker pickups as well. So I think Gibson have moved on now. They've got the Memphis historic spec and stuff like that. 
but the custom buckers I think sound superb in these um, 60th anniversary guitars of the 59 reissue. So I've covered most of the specs. That's pretty much, you know, the whole, the wood combinations and stuff is pretty much what we're going to be seeing throughout the course of the video. But I will still talk you through whenever I play uh, a different guitar. So just in summary, I think this is one of the best Les Paul sounds that I've managed to get out of the stock that we've ever had here. Because this is pretty much the tried and true combination of a Les Paul, a Marshall style of amp. You'll have heard I used the orange boost there at the start. It sounds fantastic. It just kicks the hell out of the front end of this amplifier and it boosts the reverb up and it sounds glorious. The Friedman, um, which you're going to hear throughout the course of the video, just a quick word on that. The Friedman BEOD. Friedman makes some of the best drive pedals around, obviously, because Dave Friedman is a um, genius amp designer. He knows how to distill those components into a pedal format. But it's definitely, I think, if you're looking for a gain pedal that will give you an absolute kind of... Um, if it, you want it to turn your amp into a dual personality amplifier, it doesn't, doesn't mess around. It just goes straight in with a completely different tone. The Friedman stuff does that very well. So you'll hear that it's turning this amp into a high gain monster. So that is, those are the basics of the rig. This guitar is the basics of the theory of the video. Hopefully I've got my point across of what I'm going for. So I'm going to start getting into some variants now. And as always, um, if you've got any questions about these guitars, check out the live chat because the spec is going to be linked in there, uh, or linked to the website is going to be linked in there as well. And if you've got any other questions, I'll do my best to answer them as we go through. Okay, so let me grab... Let me grab the next guitar. This is probably, I would say, this is probably the closest in terms of keeping in line with this guitar. So, PRS McCarty, single cut, 594. Even aesthetically, you can tell it's, it's very, very close to this instrument. And the McCarty 594s, I've talked about them a bunch. I love these guitars. I really like the double cut, that kind of the standard McCarty version of these, but the single cut, it's actually proved to be more popular, I think, out of the sales that we've had. I guess it's because guys are looking for an alternative to a Les Paul. Something that's maybe a little bit easier to play. Got some more kind of modern workmanship ideals behind it. You've got the legendary catalogue of PRS finishes available, 10 tops and all that stuff. This is a McCarty burst though, so it's kind of fairly vintage in nature. All of the finishes on these guitars I've picked are, um, are fairly vintage looking, so wanted to keep a theme going. But then you've got some other refinements like having coil splits on each pickup, on each humbucking pickup on this guitar. Something you don't have with a custom shop Les Paul. So that alone is kind of moving it into more versatile ground. And this particular guitar is also a 2020 spec McCarty, which has a few spec changes and revisions. I'm going to talk about that after I've played this guitar so you can hear it first of all. So let me show you some more tones. I'm going to run through the uh, levels of gain in the same kind of way I did with that Les Paul.
So, as was the case with the Les Paul I played before, right at the end there, you'll have heard highlighted the dynamic range that this guitar has as well. And it's the same thing with the Les Paul. It's just immense, even without using the coil splits, which I was doing sort of on and off throughout the course of that little segment. You can just get such an amazing array of clean sounds just by turning down the volume control, even with a load of gain. I actually had both gain pedals on at the end there. And it still sounds super clear when you roll down the volume. I think these guitars have uh, treble bleeds on them as well, which does help with that. And as I said, you do have the option to coil split too. So that's going to help if you really want to clean up the guitar from a gain sound. But it's just one of those things that a lot of players are looking for. They're looking for that dynamic sensibility. McCarty's have always done this. McCarty 594's have always done this. But more specifically, this 2020 edition uh, or revision to the McCarty line, which we have touched on in other videos, but I'll run through it for you now. That makes it even more so. It really emphasizes that fact even more so. So if I get the spec quickly, just to make sure I don't miss anything. A um, couple of things they've changed for 2020 with the McCarty's. As a couple of people in the comments I saw had already alluded to, the pickups have changed now. So these are still the 5815LT pickups, which are always in the McCarty 594s, but they've undergone the TCI treatment, which PRS is terming as tuning the capacitance and inductance of the pickup. So it's all the boring, numbery stuff that you don't have to think about. It's all been taken care of, and it just means I think that these pickups have dropped a little bit in output, but they've got more of a dynamic range. So when you really lay into them, they do um, kind of, they sweeten up, they, they compress in a nice way. But they've still got a ton of headroom there as well to work well with clean sounds. And they can, they allow this technology, the TCI allows them to fine tune the pickups for each guitar that they go into or each model of guitar. So that's really cool. They've also addressed the finish. This is their new, I think it's called TAB. Let me check what's written down. It's not written down. I think it's called TAB and it's um, it's nitro over cellulose. So it's a more sustainable, a more um, long lasting nitro finish. I'm not sure how they do it, but the, the idea is that this finish will last longer without wearing away, but it's even thinner than before as well. So you get more of that open quality of the wood. The wood isn't choking underneath all this finish. It's just a really cool kind of amalgam of things that Paul Reed Smith has decided to revise the McCarty line with and it just makes them sound even closer if it's what you're looking for to sound like even closer to something like this but with a still a real real unique spin on things a um, little bit of a shallower neck as well this is their pattern vintage profile on this guitar it's kind of somewhere between a 59 and a 60 profile I'd say it's not really hefty like a 58 uh, Les Paul neck would be but it's not as skinny as like a pattern thin or pattern regular PRS neck would be. So it's just the right balance. I love 594s. Um, somebody asked, which bridge design do I prefer, the McCarty or the McCarty 594? The McCarty I think you're referring to is with the wraparound uh, tailpiece like a Les Paul Jr. would have. That's great, and they do intonate extremely well, but this is just kind of home, I think. On this kind of instrument, with this lineup in, in contrast to the guitars that we've got going on in the lineup today this just works great and it's part of that sound that we all kind of refer to as I think comes from this tailpiece in large fact so that's the PRS I think these two guitars are probably going to appeal to most people they cover the most ground and they sit in a similar kind of price bracket so you know that's worth bearing in mind Though actually, looking at the price cards in front of me, there is a substantial difference between these two, even though they're in the same kind of tier. So if you're interested in finding more info, info about the prices, check out the links in the live chat. Okay. Let's move on to another Les Paul. If you're wondering why I've got two Les Pauls, this is to kind of prove a point as to what you get when you go to a custom shop. These guitars, the original collection of Gibson's USA lineup, they are amazing guitars. They're fantastic. They were, they were revised, were actually introduced for the first time ever, the original collection, last year, 2019. And it saw Gibson just go completely back to basics, back to what they're best known for. People, for the longest time, just wanted to buy a Les Paul standard 50s or 60s with you know either a, a thicker or a thinner neck profile and maybe slight different voicing in the pickups that's all they wanted and that's what Gibson have finally provided which is great 
So this is the 50s Les Paul standard, so it's closest to the 59 that I showed you. Very similar neck profile. Um, in terms of some other specs, let me just throw them out there quickly so you know what you're going to be hearing while I'm playing. Um, these are Alnico 2 magnet uh, pickups, burst bucker pickups. So as of a few years ago, if you went to Gibson Custom Shop Guitars, you would have found burst bucker pickups anyway. So the level has not dropped at all with the kind of electronic specification you get in these guitars. You've also got orange drop capacitors, CTS pots and all that stuff. Same deal with the mahogany body, maple top, mahogany neck, rosewood fingerboard. All the good stuff you expect to have Les Paul. And it's Heritage Cherry, which is one of the best, most highly revered finishes in, uh, in Les Paul history. So I want to stack these up. Not necessarily to compare them to one another, but just to show you what you get at a different price point and also with a different kind of mentality. And I'll talk you through that once I've played the guitar and once I've got it in tune. And if you've got any questions about kind of if you do want me to more directly compare the, the two guitars or anything like that, just let me know and I'll answer them. But I'm going to play it first. <laughs> So it's still a Les Paul, obviously, it's still a Gibson Les Paul, but I think it's got quite a different character to that 59, obviously, as you would expect. Um, what's interesting to me is that as I was playing this, I was thinking that this guitar puts me in mind of custom shop Les Pauls of about 10 years ago. So like I have a, a 2011 um, Gibson R8, as they were at the time, a 58 Les Paul. 
and the tone of this is very similar to that where it's a little bit thicker it's a little bit more player friendly i think rather than the, the real bright quality that this has that's not for everybody and i think the direction that gibson have gone in now maybe some people are, are looking back to those slightly older custom shop guitars that just had a little bit of a different spin maybe they weren't the most historically 100 percent to a t accurate but they had something that was unique, and I think that that kind of that is the Les Paul sound that most people are, are familiar with now. That slightly thicker sound. It's neither better nor worse than what Gibson are doing now with the Custom Shop. But this guitar, the tradition, uh, the original collection, sorry, standard guitar, puts me in mind of that a little bit more. I guess it's also down to the burst bucket pickups. That's probably part of it. But it's still got a huge amount of resonance. It's still got a lot of top end content as well, which is important doesn't get muddy when you go to the neck pickup with a gain sound and that's largely thanks to the orange drop caps and CTS pots and stuff like that. They're just very, very, very well made Les Paul uh, standards and that's what people are looking for. So I think they stack up quite favorably to one another. They're just sort of different sides of the coin. But tell me what you think, please comment, tell me. Please, okay. So, <clears throat> this is something we haven't talked about at all in live videos, and we're sticking with a similar kind of, well in fact, I'm looking at the cards in front of me, to the best of my knowledge, these guitars are exactly the same price, this guitar and the Les Paul I just showed you before. So these are very much two sides of the same kind of coin. Eastman uh, SB59V, so what this guitar is, before Gibson were doing the original collection, in fact, Eastman were really knocking it out of the park, and they were really, really popular in store. Still are, in fact, but a lot of people were looking to these guitars as high-end Gibson alternatives. And Eastman do—they have an incredible range of instruments. They make all kinds of, um, you know, acoustics, electrics, mandolins, whatever. If it's got strings on it, Eastman will make a version of it, and they all work really really well they're obviously taking their design ideals from certain historic guitars but then they're just kind of doing their own thing with them and this still stands up to this point i think as a really great option if you don't want a gibson but you want some of that tonal sensibility with a handcrafted kind of edge to it because these guitars are all handcrafted hand finished um so they're, they're kind of they're getting on for custom shop quality i would say but without a custom shop price point. And while I'm tuning up, I'm going to talk you through a few of the specs just so you're on the on the right page with this guitar. You've got a one-piece solid mahogany body, highly figured book-matched maple top, according to the website. There's a few different finishes available as well, which I really like. Um, stuff you don't see from Gibson guitars and guitars that are trying to copy Gibson guitars. You get some really nice, interesting finishes uh, I know we've had some, some great sort of limited run guitars in the past, still do in fact I think have a couple of them left, um, like the Pearly Gates model which was a blackout Les Paul, there's gold tops, there's so many different versions of an SB model. Uh, mahogany neck with ebony fingerboard on this guitar, so tonally I think these are a little bit brighter thanks to the ebony fingerboard. It's kind of got a little bit of a Les Paul custom um, property in that regard. And then, pickup-wise, you've got Seymour Duncan Antiquity humbuckers, which up to a couple of years ago, maybe it's even still the case, I don't know, but these were the go-to pickups that everyone was putting it in their Les Pauls to try and make them sound more classic and more vintage. So, let's see if that's a case in point. <laughs>
Okay, so hopefully what you'll be hearing out of this guitar, certainly what I get from it, is that it's got that nice open top end thing. It's actually, these pickups, the antiquity pickups, are actually quite underwound. And it's definitely got that sort of Telecaster on steroids kind of sound that I really like in a Les Paul. Again, as I said, conversely with the um, thicker sounding um, original collection Les Paul, the Gibson Les Paul. They're just two sides of the same kind of coin. Neither one is better than the other. They're just going to work for you as a player in a different way. So it depends on your preference. But a lot of top end content out of this guitar. Which I really like and it's very dynamic that way. So even when you go to the higher gain sound, it works really nicely as well to have all that extra articulation. You can play on the neck pickup with a lot of gain and play kind of fast notes, fast note lines. And it's going to work really well. Whereas sometimes a thicker sounding guitar falls apart a little bit there. So the Eastman, I just think is a great package um, overall, but there's a couple of significant differences. Like I said, the ebony fingerboard. This guitar also has a slightly different, probably imperceivably different, 24 and a half inch scale as opposed to a 24 and three quarter inch scale uh, that all the other guitars I've shown you, well, apart from the 594. Basically the two Gibsons have. Um, so a little bit shorter. I think it's a little bit easier to play. I love the neck profile on this guitar as well. I don't know exactly what profile they're going for. Um, no, no reference on my notes here, but it's just very comfortable. It's a little bit slimmer than a 50s style neck, but it's also more of a kind of a V. And I guess this is down to the hand finishing that you get on these guitars, which you don't necessarily get on the likes of Gibson guitars anymore. These guitars are, are handcrafted and hand finished, so every neck is going to be slightly different, and that harks back to the good old days, as people like to say, of when Gibson were inconsistently manufacturing guitars, you could say. It was part of the magic that went into those guitars. These have got that. So I just want to throw that out there. I want to make the case for Eastman. We never featured them before, but hopefully I think this sits very comfortably with the, uh, the company that surrounds it. So hopefully, I think just seeing a few of the comments, people are on board with, with Eastman guitars. So check out the range of stuff that we got. This is an SB59V. Um, in antique amber finish, but there's a couple of other options. Check out the website. I think you'll be very surprised with the range of instruments that they make and the price point that they get them to. So that's Eastman. So I want to follow out the Schecter. I'm just going to say that again into the microphone. I want to pull out a Schecter, which if you saw the HSS shootout last week, the second guitar I played after an exotic was... Um, was a Schecter and or a custom shop Schecter. That's the important point to make. I think it surprised a lot of people. Let me just have a drink. I think the Schecter surprised a lot of people in that it's got a really nice kind of vintage tone, but it sounds a little bit more modern. It also has the unique ability to sound as if it's tuned lower than standard which I don't know how they do it, but the same principle applies to this, which is a Solo 2 custom shop guitar. Obviously, you can tell what this is trying to be, or certainly taking inspiration from. Um, so custom shop Solo 2 carve top as well, which I don't know if you can really see that on this angle, but you've got some really nice bevels on this guitar, very comfortable, top and bottom, front and back. They're just really nice, really nicely crafted guitars. Pickup wise, I think these are Schecter's own pickups as well. They're, I believe they're the Pasadena model pickups. And I'm just going to play this because I think you might be surprised um, just looking at it as to what it's going to sound like. You know, it's not necessarily going to go in the direction you think it might just on its appearance. So let me get it in tune. Of course, I didn't do this before I started the video. Of course not. Whatever. Here we go. Here we go, let's start clean and I'm going to get the gain going and you're going to hear the great quality of this guitar.
Interesting tangent at the end there, went really heavy for some reason, but this guitar kind of, um, I think it leans into that style as well. It's kind of what Schechter have been known for for a long time is that, that versatility of tone. They can do very heavy tones, they can do very clean tones as well. This guitar just does it superbly. I think when you had the cleaner tones, hopefully you'll have heard, this probably has the most top end content of all the guitars I've shown you so far, but it's a very different kind of top end. It's not. Um, it's not necessarily the kind of stingy Telecaster thing that you want out of a good, bright 59 style Les Paul. It's more of like a... I'm not sure how to describe it really. I guess it's more of like um, the treble control on an amp as opposed to the presence control, if that makes sense. It's just a really, like a hi-fi kind of top end, which may appeal to you, it may not. I don't mean hi-fi in a negative sort of sterile sense either, I just mean it's got a lot of fidelity in this guitar. Hopefully that made sense. Uh, the neck, as someone is asking about, is fairly flat, actually. It's kind of 60-ish, if you wanted to put it in Les Paul terms. It's kind of early 60s Les Paul profile. Um, let me get the spec just so I can tell you exactly what is listed for this guitar. Um, okay, so we've got the usual flame maple top, which... I think this is the most interesting looking of the bunch as well. It's it's certainly the most different. Um, mahogany back, natural binding. You've got 12 inch fingerboard radius, so a little bit flatter. 24 and three quarter inch scale. Uh, custom she C, <laughs> custom C shape neck. That's not easy to say. Custom C shape. So I guess that could be anything really, couldn't it? But take it from me, it kind of feels like a 60 Les Paul. It's also got a little bit of a Fender sensibility, this guitar. I really like what Schecter do because they marry up these different properties very well. Obviously, they've got a lot of experience building like their uh, Wembley model, that kind of S-style guitar. They put a little bit of that into this tonally as well, I think. I mean, you could be the judge of that, but I think this is an interesting hybrid. Um, somebody did comment on the tuning stability of this guitar. It has nothing to do with the guitar. I just hadn't tuned it properly before I started playing. You've got really nice... Um, what brand are they? Hip shot locking tuners on this guitar, so tuning is not going to be an issue. Um, plus, this guitar could probably benefit from some, from some new strings. 
uh, but that's you know this is all negligible stuff this guitar is fantastic it stays in tune very well and it sounds great oh yeah so uh, the pickups in this guitar as I said I think that the Schecter Pasadena models as in, in terms of whether having covers on or not affects the tone Oh, you're getting into uh, dangerous internet territory there. I don't want to go kind of gear page circa 2010 here, but I think there is a big difference. Well, not okay, not big, but there is a difference between um, covers or no covers. As big as a difference between the pickup magnets, if I'm being honest. I don't know what the scientific relativity of all that actually is, but brighter tones, I think, come from uncovered guitars. It's not the kind of thing that you couldn't compensate for just by changing your amp settings. But I think there's a, a slight difference. I'm sure if you had the same guitar back to back, all other variables the same, um, with and specifically with unpotted pickups, you'd notice it more. These are potted pickups. You get a little bit more of a microphonic edge if you've got unpotted pickups with with covers on, I think, and that adds some more top end. So it's kind of, it's a real weird question to try and address I guess there's so many variables that you could apply that that mean that mean so many different things to different kind of guitars but in my opinion it does change the tone a little bit but I wouldn't worry about it because there's so many other things going on in the signal chain and the build process of the guitar you're probably not going to notice that's my opinion please don't slag me off on the gear page okay Let's move on to another guitar before things get too heated in the comment section. It's about time I talked about nags, and this will also come on to the fact that these guitars have uh, no pickup covers, interestingly enough. So nags guitars have always been known for the very, I don't want to say PRS-esque, but that is kind of what they um, level of finishing. So I'm talking about real high grade. You can see some examples on the wall behind me. Amazing uh, gloss finish guitars. They do a lot of satin finished guitars as well, but that's always been their bag, is kind of making very ornate, um, wonderful, high-grade instruments in terms of the finish. What Nags have decided to do more recently is introduce some uh, kind of tasteful relicking and um, aging processes to their guitars. And we received a, a couple of these guitars, this being one of them fairly recently, and considering this is pretty much their first stab at doing this, they've done an amazing job of making these sound authentically old. So this is the um, this is the Kanai model, which you've seen in our videos before. It's basically Joe Nag's take on a single cut mahogany body design. But I think this guitar has a couple of crucial differences. As I said, it's got the kind of relicking, slight relicking finish on it. Hopefully you can see from here, it's not drastic, but they've got some, um, I think it's pretty tasteful, the aging that they've done on this guitar. You know, you can just see a little bit of wear down here, a little bit on the back, and you really feel it on the neck as well. That's what I like so much about this, the fret edges. You probably can't see on the camera, but there's just a slight bit of wear right on the edges of the of the fingerboard, which works perfectly in terms of getting some extra playing comfort, I think. Um, this guitar, I believe, is kind of a takeoff of the Eric Steckel model. So there's a couple of spec changes that you wouldn't see on a regular Kanai model either. Uh, one being the open coil pickups. There's another Steckel. The guitar, the green guitar on the back there, is um, a Kanai Eric Steckel signature model. The bodywood's I think a little bit thicker on this guitar than a regular Kanai. And if I just get the spec handy, you've got uh, okay. So mahogany body, maple top. Um, yeah, so thicker body on this guitar with almost no back carve. That's worth pointing out. Mahogany neck with an ebony fingerboard again. That doesn't look like ebony to me, but that is what the spec says. Uh, Seymour Duncan Saturday Night Special Humbuckers, which, interesting reference point that. I really like what Duncan do with their pickups. And that's obviously referring, I guess, to the kind of mid to late 70s kind of classic rock tones, I guess. Well, I've played these pickups before and they sound great, so it's going to work well in this guitar. Hopefully you can even hear acoustically there how loud this thing is. It 
So that stands us in good stead. Let me play you some tones and see what we can get out of this. this guitar a lot I think what's interesting I think it's down to the pickups largely as well but kind of a lot a little bit more um, inherent gain and output from this guitar so it really works well with those drive tones it's still nice and dynamic though even when I went to the higher gain sound with the Friedman pedal this is kind of again it's it's not like a modded Les Paul would have been um, where they were really high output and had kind of uncontrollable ceramic magnet pickups and stuff like that. It's just the right balance of a good rock guitar, I think, this one. It still does nice clean so clean tones if you've got the right amp that you're plugging it into, but I think this excels when you put some gain on it, and that is usually, to be fair, what people are looking for out of a single-cut style guitar, is you're probably not going to play it clean at least 90% of the time you're not going to play it clean. I mean, I'm stereotyping there, but... I think usually that's what people are looking to get out of this kind of style of guitar. So Nags is a very good contender for that. So if you're interested in this guitar or any other Nags guitars, there's so many of them and they're so different. Um, that you know, there's such a versatile range of guitars. Check out the Peach Guitars website. Check out the link in the live chat. I'm sure there'll be something that you like from Nags, but this is a great option and I think this fits very well with the lineup today. Okay, so. Before I move on to um, the last guitar, I just want to, as I always do, remind you guys that if you're interested in hearing more from us and you want to find out sort of the information of what we've been up to throughout the course of the week, um, find out more information about these guitars or just anything else that's going on in store, make sure that you're signed up to our email newsletter. There'll be a link in the live chat to do so if you haven't done so already. And it's great, we just put it out two or three times a week and it just gives you all the information you need to know about the store. 
as I said at the start of this video, um, thank you to everyone who's been supporting us throughout this time. It's been really difficult for everyone, but your undying love for all things guitar has been an absolute masterwork. So it's much appreciated. And if you want to continue to do that and continue to support us and to get great new gear for yourself, check out the website, check out the newsletter, and that's where you'll find out all the info that you want to know. So let me just have a quick drink. I'm talking a lot today, and hay fever's come out in full swing. If, if that's probably what you can hear in my quieter than usual today. I'm just going to keep to the playing to do the talking. Okay, so last guitar of the bunch. I'm going to end with something a little bit special. Made right here in the UK by one of the UK's best guitar builders, Mr. Patrick James Eggle. So this guitar is one of his um, amazing Macon, Macon, I'm pretty sure it's Macon uh, models. Faded cherry burst with a master grade top. Uh, I remember when this guitar came in, it absolutely blew me away in terms of its finishing. I love the look of the pickups as well. These are Mojo pickups in this guitar. The sound, of course, is fairly important as well, and they sound great too, but just aesthetically, I think this has got a lot going on. It's kind of, um, it's along, more along the PRS lines than along the Gibson lines, but it straddles it quite nicely. Um, Spec-wise, you've got mahogany wood body with the maple top, as I said, mahogany neck with a dark rosewood fingerboard, very dark rosewood, in fact. Um, and then, interestingly enough, you've got the kind of fairly typical Les Paul appointments of the tunematic style bridge. Um, Goto SD90 tuners, so they're kind of, they look like Plusons, which is cool. So let me just get this in tune, and I'm going to show you how it sounds. Mojo pickups, I think they're a UK company as well, so there's a lot of really cool stuff going on in the UK boutique guitar game, um, which doesn't always get that much attention. We, we tend to fixate a lot on American stuff, which is amazing. It's all great stuff, um, but we sometimes forget our own builders that we've got here, which they're doing amazing stuff. So this guitar is a great representation of that. We've got a really good relationship with Eggle. And um, they're always sending us some amazing new guitars that you guys seem to just be snapping up. So hopefully this guitar won't be here for too much longer um, once I've got it in tune. Come along now. I'm going to show you some tones. Okay. Let's go.
very very nice very nice stuff patrick amazing uh example of what eggle does brilliantly which as i said is just they've they've always got the right balance of vintage open tone with modern playability this neck is incredible it's a nice satin finished neck um a little bit chunkier than some other eggle guitars that i've played before there's a couple on the on the stand up there behind me um on the right of your screen shows the other stuff that they do very well they do some t styles they do some s styles but these make on guitars are just remarkable they've really got the right uh, balance of all things i think this sounds a little bit like the Schecter in certain respects it's a little bit more high fidelity it's got a similar kind of feel to it overall as well a um, bit of a slimmer body with some really nice contouring all, all in fact all over the place it's got the nice neck heel carve here Hopefully you can see a little bit of that, and here the the uh, kind of the belly cut too, and then you know it looks like that as well. It's got this amazing tigery, flamey maple top. Um, certainly the most the most out there, I think. It it looks a little bit like this Les Paul, in fact, but it's a little bit more three dimensional. So that's why I wanted to end with this one. It's just a real stunner. Patrick James Eggle is making incredible guitars. We're very very pleased to stock them here. So. I don't imagine this will be around for much longer, but if you want to be in with a chance of getting it, you know what to do. Go to the website, check out the rest of the, st the rest of the stock, excuse me, that we've got of, of Eggle stuff. I think that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed this um, overview of the single cut stuff. We're going to try and keep this going, I think, with some other guitar styles, popular guitar styles. So if there's anything that you want to see um, compared, and if you've got two particular guitars you want to see, um, you know, to, to put up against one another, let us know in the comments or send us a message however you wish. We'll certainly try and get to some more of this kind of theme because this is you know, proving to be very interesting, the findings that we make. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, in case you missed it earlier on in the video, the rig today, playing through a Magnetone M80. Marshall had an orange two-stroke boost EQ pedal. Friedman BEOD, Blackout Edition. Check those out on the website while you can. Line 6 HX effects for some reverb and some delay. Pretty simple stuff, pretty simple concept, but very different results from each guitar. So I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, please like this video when it's done, friends and all that stuff. Subscribe to the newsletter, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and I'll see you next week. Have a great weekend, guys. Have a good week. Stay safe, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next Friday. Cheers.